Hello friends and welcome to Escaping the Mouse with your host, me, Breck Roll. All right, it's kind of a stormy and windy day out. It's actually pretty nice to be out. It's probably in the 60s, but as you can kind of see, it's overcast and it's windy and it's not a very pretty day to be out. But it doesn't matter because I have a little project that I want to work on in the house. Let me show you what I come up with. Now this is an issue that kind of popped up a month or two ago when I was painting the master bedroom. I noticed that when I was taking the room apart, in a lot of places where the door is open, there's these little springy things that are designed to keep the door from uh, hitting the wall itself and they're supposed to stop the door from uh, banging into the wall. Otherwise you run into the idea that you end up pushing this into the door and then you have a, a dent in the wall. And it's a very simple fix to do it. And I noticed when I was, uh, like I said, painting the bedroom in here that there isn't one behind this door. And so basically what's happening is every time the door hits, it's hitting on the trim here. Now, it hasn't really been that big of an issue for me so far because for the most part, I don't leave the room door open all the time uh, because I want to keep the cats out of here. In fact, and for more often than not, the door is closed all the time. So the only time the door is open is when I'm coming in or out. And I don't even have to open the door all the way to come in because I'll just open it, you know, far enough that I can get in and then close it behind me. So that's not an issue, but if I ever did get, get to the point where I wanted to keep that door open a little bit, you know, we're going to have uh, the possibility of damaging this. So I want to get one of those little spring things here. And I said, well, so while I'm doing it, let's look around the rest of the house and see if there's any other places that maybe could use one of these. And then I looked at this door. This is a linen closet at the end of the hall. There isn't one there either. So uh, this is another one that'd be good because, you know, once again, that will get pushed into the... Uh, into the wall at some point if I lose control of it. So I want to put one here. Um, this is the guest bedroom and there is one back here. So we're good to go there. But there isn't one on this closet door here. Now this one's going to be a little weird because the door almost opens all the way but it doesn't quite make it and it begins hitting the, uh, the frame of the window there. But I got another idea for that. Let me show you what my plan is for that. The idea came actually from these doors that go into the kitchen. They don't have a traditional spring thing on the ground there. What they have is things like this and they go on the hinge and they only allow the door to open a certain amount. And so this one doesn't ever hit the wall because it hits those little, uh, these little things here uh, before and that keeps the door from going all the way open. And so I was looking closely at this and these are actually pretty, pretty much adjustable. You know, I could set this uh, so it stops, you know, a lot easier than where it is. You know, I could just twist this little piece here and change the angle that works. I want to see if I can find a couple of these because we'll use that for that door in the guest bedroom. And there's also this door here going into the pantry that doesn't have anything. And it's got kind of a similar situation where it hits a little bench down there. So I think we're going to get one, one for this thing too. And last but not least, I'd like to get one of these spring pieces for the front door as well, because uh, it doesn't have one either. But what it does have is this little metal plate here. Uh, and I think the goal here is if the door opens too fast and gets away from it, it hits that metal plate. But, you know, if that happens too many times, it's going to make that metal plate look bad. So. I think I'm just going to get one of those little uh, springy things for there too. So that's three of the springy things and two of the uh, ones that go on the hinges. And so I'm going to run over to Home Depot and let's see if we can find those. All right, so I found what I'm looking for. got the little uh, hinge pieces. I also uh, found just a, a bundle of uh, the spring pieces. So that was actually uh, more efficient uh, financially uh, than buying three individuals. Them coming out though, it's obvious that they are ready for spring and summer. All the plants, all the barbecues, all the uh, lawnmowers and stuff, they're ready to go. Now it's kind of a good idea that I bought the five pack of the, the spring stoppers because when I got home I realized that there was one door that I missed. So if I'd only bought three of them, which is what I originally thought I needed, um, I would have had to go back and get a fourth one. So there's this one here by the front door. 
This is the door that I forgot. This is a closet door in the hall there, so I got one for there. We got one for here for this door. And we got one back here for this door. In addition, I actually bought three of these things. I wanted to get more because the ones that, the doors that they have that I showed you going into the kitchen uh, actually have one of these on every one of the hinges. So there's three of them on each door. I, did, I thought that might be a little bit overkill, but I was at least thinking doing two on each, but they only had three of them in stock. So I'm gonna do two of them on this door in here, and we're gonna do one of them on the uh, door going into the pantry in the kitchen. And I think that'll be enough because honestly, this door, these doors here are both pretty light. You know, they, they're typical size doors, but they're hollow doors. So it isn't going to be like there's going to be an enormous amount of force on uh, going in on these. So I think uh, one will be fine here and two in the bedroom will be the way to go. So let's get these things installed. All right, so when it comes to installing these, you have basically a choice. You can either attach it to the baseboard here and have it hit the door, or you can attach it to the door and have it hit the baseboard. In this case, I kind of prefer to attach it to the baseboard and have it hit the door because the door is going to be a little bit more solid and able to hold up to the impacts of that versus going the other way. This is kind of soft and this is more likely to be da uh, damaged. So what I've done is I put a little piece of, uh, of masking tape on there just so I can draw on that and make my holes and get everything lined up. And what I'll do is I'll put, I put this right here, open the door, make sure the door hits it, which it does, which I would show you, except for the fact I got two hands and I need to hold the camera with one. Uh, but trust me, this is the proper location for this one. Now um, I'm just going to drill a hole in the center because there's a little hole in the center there where the screw goes through and that little mounting pad goes on there and then that thing just screws on there. So uh, I'll get that done and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, it may not show it, but that's the hole right there that I drilled. And now I pulled the tape off and now it's just a matter of screwing it all together. Pretty easy. So there's this little hole here and this is the thing the spring goes into. I usually like to have that hole kind of at the three o'clock position because then uh, you got kind of gravity holding the whole thing together and it works a lot better that way. But there you go. I always love the sound those things make. Yeah, I think that'll work. And at that point then the closest we get uh, to the door hitting the wall there is, I don't know, it looks like it's about, about a three quarters of an inch gap there. So that's perfect. That's what we want. So let's close the door and install the rest of them. So these are a little bit different. Uh, this is uh, what the stopper looks like here. And basically you have the two stoppers, one here and one here. And then you have this little hole here. And basically what you do is you just pull the pu uh, pin out of, out of one of the hinges. You put this thing on top. You slide the, the pin through the uh, hole here and into the hinge itself. And now you have this thing here which stops the door. And since this part here on the, that I have my finger on, is actually threaded I can change how short that is and that'll adjust how much the door will open see if I leave it as it currently is the door will probably only open to about 90 degrees but I actually want it to be able to open up quite a ways I just don't want it hitting the windowsill at the bottom there so we'll probably screw that thing all the way down to try and uh, make sure that we get you know as, as much uh, spacing on the door as possible so let me show you how that works we're going to start by taking the hinge off the top the beauty of this is it's actually a fairly simple process 
and I won't even have to take the door off because I'm just going to do one hinge at a time. And once I get that done, you know, we'll go down and do the one on the bottom. So first thing I got to do is just pound the uh, the hinge pin out of there. I just do that with a small hammer. And that comes out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this, put the pin through there. It's a little firm, but that's okay. Yeah, we got that. And we're just going to put the, the pin back in. Now, as I said, I expected with the current setting that the, the door would open to about 90 degrees, and that's clearly what happens. So what we're going to do is we're going to shorten this little piece here by screwing it in. Let's see what that does for us. See, that's still, that's still, uh, that's definitely a lot better, but I want to screw it in even more. I think that's going to probably be good. So let's put the one on the bottom and we'll be done with this. All right, so there we go. We got one on the top hinge and we got one on the bottom hinge. And basically now the door just opens like that. And that's the furthest it'll go. And so that gives me like still about a good eight or 10 inches clearance of the door. So it won't hit the, hit the, uh, hit the window sill anymore and uh, and we got that problem fixed. Let's go do the one in the pantry. Now, since I only had one more left for the pantry door, I decided to do it in the, on the middle hinge instead of on the top or the bottom hinge. That way, uh, you, if you do it on the top, then it kind of tends to twist the door a little bit and those kinds of things can rip hinges out of the wall and stuff like that. This one will actually basically keep the load more evenly uh, distributed across the door and you'll be less likely to do that to uh, you know rip the hinge off but that works good too goes naturally to about there which is where I want it and uh, so if I don't pound that too hard that should be good to go now so I think that completes our project for today uh, I think one of the things I try and do with some of these home improvement type vlogs is show you that so many of the things that need to happen to your own house are actually really simple to do uh, but a lot of times people get to the point where they say, oh, I need to do something, let's call a mechanic or let's call a, uh, a handyman or an electrician or something like that. So many of these things uh, start out as a cheap project. This thing was 16 bucks for the parts. And uh, if you called a handyman in or someone to install those, you would have paid upwards of 100 bucks to do that. And you saw how easy it is. So you know what? Don't be afraid of uh, projects. And if you go to like one of the big box stores, Home Depot or the other store that shall not be named here, uh, you know, generally they'll, you know, you'll find somebody in the store that'll be able to actually explain you how to do things like this. So, uh, you know, don't be afraid to ask questions. There's no such thing as a stupid question when it comes to things like this. And you'll be surprised what you can do. So anyway, I think that's all that I have for today. Thank you as always for watching, and I'll see you next time on Escaping the Mouse. Good night.